Hello, and welcome to CHCF's On Deck. Today, we're here with Dr. Angelo Volandes, and he is the leader of a nonprofit called Advanced Care Planning Decisions. So, Angelo, can you tell us a little bit about that organization? Yeah, I think, first, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here at CHCF uh, On Deck. When we talk to patients and ask them where do they want to spend the end of life, you know, eight out of 10 Americans say they want to spend it in comfort, comfort and at home. And yet the facts are that most patients end up dying in our hospitals and our skilled nursing facilities. So our nonprofit thought that one way for people to understand their options for medical care are to use videos to better inform them about their options, especially at the end of life. So tell me about what we might see on one of these videos. So the videos explore different aspects of what the right decision in a healthcare situation might look like. The first series of videos is really just asking you questions like, what's important to you right now? What would be important to you if you had an advanced illness? What would be important if it was a quality of life versus a quantity of life? So there are these general sort of values videos that we have, but then we focus on specific decisions. For example, in someone with an advanced illness, there's always gonna be the issue of ICU level care, for example, intubation or CPR. Um, for our patients who have an advanced illness, whether or not they would want dialysis. So what we often show in our videos is the actual procedure so that people get an understanding of what, it is, what does it mean to be on dialysis? What are the other options? And why do you think video is more important than just having the conversation verbally, or do the two go hand in hand? The two definitely go hand in hand. We view the videos as a great way to spark the conversation. This is all about the conversation that everybody should be having with doctors, with families. Uh, we live in a visually literate society today, and if a picture speaks a thousand words, videos speak hundreds of thousands of words. Videos are the way that people learn, absorb information, and what we find is that it sparks the questions that a lot of patients and families ought to be asking themselves and then ought to be asking providers as well. And what kind of feedback have you gotten from providers that are using the videos? Many of us were not trained on how to have this conversation, uh, especially older providers. There were no palliative care classes. There were no classes in communication. So the videos fill a need uh, in their education that's really helpful for them. Uh, and what we, uh, what we hear is that um, instead of spending the time to describe the same thing to each patient, when a patient watches a video, they have a framework with which to understand their options. It's critically important to this whole endeavor that as a provider, we remain neutral as to what the right decision is. It's really important to me as a provider to say, you know what the right answer is? The right answer is what my patient and their loved ones want when they're fully informed. So all the videos have been vetted by national experts. We're not trying to lean one way or the other as to what the right decision is. Mm -hmm. The right decision is whatever you feel based on your values, but once you have the information with which to make that decision. You are doing some studies about health literacy and especially in um, communities of color or people whose first language is not English and how these videos might help um, with health literacy issues in um, ethnic populations. What we're finding in our studies is that it's actually level of health literacy or level of education that is often the driving factor as to whether a person understood their options or not. I encourage people to have this conversation at home with their loved ones, uh, churches, synagogues, temples. We should all be having this conversation years ahead of time, way upstream, so that when we do become critically ill, when we are in that emergency room at three o'clock in the morning, it's not the first time we're having the conversation. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much, Emma. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.